Hello everybody, back here for Idiot's Guide to Woodworking and my final episode of my free wood full wall shelf. As you can see here, it's up, it's together. I don't like the paint. Um, I was liking it a lot more before when I was doing it than I do now. The other thing I did that I also completely forgot about, I have no idea, my mind was completely ignorant apparently when I was doing it. I forgot to build these two uprights. So what happened was the fact, I believe now that I've actually think back on it, I chose to wait to build those because I wanted to make sure the whole thing for exact height that was going on, but apparently at some point in my mind I forgot to go back and measure for those. So what I ended up doing was I just ripped down a couple boards I had out there. Luckily I still had some of the cheap, the free particle board out there. Um, or what do you want to call it, chipboard, whatever the heck you want to call the stuff. But I knew I was going to repaint this a different setup down the road, so I didn't even bother putting a coat of paint on it at all. So I went ahead and thought I was going to assemble the thing, and then I think what I'll probably do is you can see how this is sticking out here. This board's actually a slight bit narrower front to back. It's actually 12 inches to 12 and a half. And the reason is because my table saw is so crappy and small, it'll only give me a rip fence of exactly 12 inches. So the reason I originally wanted the cabinet to be 12 inches, but these boards were already 12 and a half inches long when I got them, wasn't willing to rip down for a half inch just for that. So I let it stick out an extra half inch, no big deal. I also wasn't sure if I was gonna need it. I plan on just doing one foot down here in the bottom, decided to go ahead and run two because I wanted the extra support. So now these uprights are fully supported directly to the floor. There are pocket holes screwed in there as you can see. Um, they're not glued. I didn't bother gluing this cabinet at all because I knew I'd wanna pull it back apart to move it. It's hard, gonna be hard to get out of here. It's gonna be kind of a little bit on the flimsy side, or whatever. As there's no back on it, you can also see, you can see right into the paneling. There's no full back on here. I definitely want to put a back on here. I think um, that's something I got to figure out what I'm gonna do because, unfortunately, as I mentioned before, down here you're gonna see there's electric baseboard heater. So in order to do a back, I can't do a back all the way to the floor. I can only do it do a backing down here to this bottom shelf. And I think that'll still give me a lot more support, just racking back and forth. But for right now, my plan is gonna be is actually to build a couple just angle brackets, and I'm gonna screw it here to the cabinet, and then back into that wall. And I'll just go ahead and probably paint them a tan or something to hopefully hide it into the um, wall itself or whatever I'm gonna worry about there. So definitely, um, the other thought I had is bringing in my pocket hole jig and actually mounting a couple pocket hole jig holes in this inside board here and then screw it to the wall. But it's gonna be hard to get the right, I'm gonna have to have a super long screw to do that and I'm not sure it's gonna be really the most structurally sound because it's gonna start losing some strength there I would think. But my plan is with this gap here that's sticking out, I'm going to go ahead and actually build a trim piece or something that's gonna fill that in to kinda of face front these boards because I didn't really like the way the plaster and stuff I done was. So I'm gonna give you guys a whole bunch of the problems with the scenario, oh, real quickly before I forget, this took me about four hours to assemble. This was the absolute worst thing I've ever assembled in my life because I didn't think, I didn't bother cutting my feet first down here to support it, so it was sagging, I was having a hard time measuring, trying to keep it level. This room's not 100% level, so I had a little bit of issue there. Um, had just a whole bunch of problems and I basically had like some little plastic clamps here that I was clamping to the side to hold them together and had I had somebody here to help me, I'm sure I could have knocked it out in about an hour but because I was alone, it was just a constant back and forth and then what I finally started doing after a while, I was smart enough to figure it out, I got it where I wanted it, I put in one screw in the back here and then I leveled it front to back with my level, screwed in the second screw, then I just put the level across and wherever it was level, I raised and lowered this side and screwed it in. So after I figured out what I was doing, I wasn't concerned about the exact inches per se as I was about the level. That was my number one concern and that's what I needed to do. Also, as you'll notice, I have a large section over here that goes down, then it goes into smaller sections. I figured this will be more like my heavier books or whatever, different stuff, much narrower than up here is getting more. I might put a picture frame or something like that on these top ones. So it'll be a lot easier to, um, I guess, have a little more room there. Also, the middle ones are gonna be all, they're about even. It actually gets a little bit smaller at the bottom, which I realized after I put my first one in, I did my measurements and I had, had it screwed up because I was planning on this being only 12 inches off the floor, but the boards I had out there, I had to raise it up to 16 inches off the floor. So again, because I didn't have these middle divider uprights measured right, 
I had to rework a lot of the, pro the programming of it, the whole measurements, all that good crap. It was just a big pain in the butt. So the one thing I was happy with is I had my measurements across really, really good. There was one of these middle ones here that was a little bit not cut quite right that made it really tight, which I ended up just putting it down here in the bottom, which helped spread it out a little bit so it worked fine. But some of the things I did not like the way I did is that I put the plaster stuff in here, as you can see, the board had fell off out there, which if it doesn't fall off, you wouldn't have a problem. But it chipped out really bad. I'm not liking the look of that. I'm gonna come back in and sand it, wood putty over it probably, and then retouch that up with paint when I paint the whole cabinet, whatever color I'm gonna be. I also was not a big fan of, there's just a handful of little things I didn't like about it. Again, like I said, I forgot the uprights. I did not like that at all. Um, the top, I kind of screwed up without thinking. Um, I have it rounded off here on all these boards, so I have this weird little gap. Same thing, you come down here to the um, deal here. This is not flush because they both round in different angles. I wish I would have either cut these boards back farther so the whole thing recessed back in, or I wish I would have cut it all square and then just hand sanded it off or face trimmed it. I'm really looking back now. I really wish I would have face trimmed it, but that would have taken a lot more wood that I didn't have, and this was free. But if I was going to build this something nice, I would never start off with a particle board to begin with. But if I was, I'd face trim the whole thing, which would give me a lot more support also. And over here, as you can see these, these boards, I'm going to um, probably put like a 25-pound weight on one of these and then check it in like a week and see if it's sagging or not. Just kind of keep an eye. I'm going to go through and measure them all. I'm going to let a post-it note for probably the first few months and measure it once a week, once every other week, once I start putting weight on it to see if it's sagging. The one thing I kind of did appreciate now that I have this up here with the fact that I didn't have um, the tall um, top all the ceiling, it is... Um, the ability to put more stuff up there. So I'm gonna have some nice long storage and that kind of thing where I won't have it here. So that is definitely kind of a nice thing. And also, as you'll notice, I'm not sure if it's gonna show up here on camera or not, but the top is still sagged down just a little bit in the middle. And what I'm gonna do is go get some shims and then I'll shim up these bottom boards down here. Um, it wasn't exactly perfect, but it's pretty darn close. And it's right now it's solid, it's not going anywhere. It's just I don't like the look of that top being down. So. Definitely not a fan of that. I'm not a fan of the paint job. I do not care for that at all. Um, just a big pain in the butt. Also, if you're ever gonna build one of these by yourself, I highly recommend another stick, like I said. I didn't dado these in. Had I dadoed all these in, these shells would've just popped right into place and I wouldn't have had to keep balancing them. I wouldn't have had to worry about having them straighten that they would've all been done on the router table and I would've been good to go. So, or the table blade dado, whichever you want to do. And I didn't have either one of those available to me at the time so i just went with this route and like i said i'm happy with it for the moment it's content it's going to hold my stuff up it's going to keep it off my floor it's going to work that way but i definitely am looking to put a back on it and paint it some other color um i don't like the way this paint turned out not one bit and now that i'm seeing the ugly particle board out here even it's even standing out even more i'm wishing i would just put a stain on the particle board it honestly looks better than my paint job so unless you're looking for something really really strange um stay away from this paint job it did not turn out good for me you can see right there it's all kind of abstracty looking and i'm not happy with the process so one good thing about it is I think it'll be easy. Now I've got enough coats of paint on it, I can scuff it up and put another coat of paint on there and I'm good to go. Oh, another mistake I almost forgot I made. Pocket hole screws are on the inside on my upright because I only rounded the front. Um, pocket hole screws are on the outside on this side. So I screwed up. I didn't pocket hole the right side of that one because I rounded over this side so it had to be sticking out. So unfortunately, not real happy with that, which I probably could have you know, switched them around, had the pocket hole sticking out here, but wouldn't have mattered too much that moment. So either way, it kind of sucks, but that's what's going to happen. So other than that, for free storage, like I said, I've got some paint wrapped up in it and some pocket hole screws. It's the only cost I have wrapped up in this thing. So I'm going to guess I probably have actual physical cost, eight, nine dollars maybe is what I've got. And look at the paint, I'd say I overpaid, but look at the overall structure. It's just, it's a really great source of storage. It's gonna give me tons of space. I'm gonna be able to store tons of stuff on here. I'm loving the idea. And that's what I was after. So lots of little compartments, keeping things organized is definitely what I'm going for here. And I believe that's what I got. So if you guys have any questions, um, feel free to hit me up the comment below and I will try and answer them. If you have any thoughts on how I can make this better, like maybe a way to kind of hide these ugly edges or something like that, or another better technique to paint this with, um, I'm happy to hear it. So. 
leave a comment below. Be sure and rate, comment, and subscribe. And I'll talk to you guys later. Thank you very much for watching, and have yourself a safe and wonderful day.